So this lecture is bug six, math 265A, Quest to College. I'm Joe Vasta. And what we're going to do, what's so significant about this lecture, is we're going to tie a bunch of stuff that we've learned together to get us something called the derivative. So very important lecture. We've had the DQ. We've had bug handouts where we studied instantaneous velocity, average velocity, stuff like that. And then we also have limits that we've been doing. There was some continuity. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making connections with all three of those. So I have f of t describes a bug on the number line where the input is time and the output is position on a number line. Okay, the displacement in the time interval 4 to 8, we'll just say that those are seconds for time intervals, happens to be f of n time, so f of 8, minus f of beginning time, f of 4. So this is not new to, to you guys. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the average velocity within the same time interval. Now the average velocity within the same time interval happens to be displacement over time. But we said that we can do this. We can go here's the displacement f of 8 minus f of 4 all over 8 minus 4. And it also looks like that this is rise over run. The average velocity happens to be the slope of a secant line when you graph f of t. So this is the average velocity. This is what I'm going to focus on in this lecture. Here's the funny part. I could also get the average velocity by going like this. This is going to freak some of you out. f of 4 minus f of 8 all over 4 minus 8. So I'm going to say that that is pretty freaky, but it's true. Why? Because if I multiply the bottom by negative 1 and the top by negative 1 here, I haven't really done anything to the fraction, I end up getting that. Now, I cannot say that displacement is f of 4 minus f of 8. There's no way I can say that, but in terms of the average velocity, it doesn't matter which way I write them. Um, we don't encourage this because, you know, we like to say displacement over time. But it's true that we can write it either way, and there's a reason I'm doing that. Let's move on. When we did bug number four, we had to fill in a chart. So um, I'm going to actually have that chart filled in for us because we've already done this work where we're looking um, at here's the function. It is f of t equals t squared, and we have these time intervals. And remember how these time intervals, the first three kept getting smaller and smaller and kept coming closer to one from the left. And then these three time intervals kept getting smaller and smaller, and they were coming in closer from the right. And remember, they asked the question, what is the bug's instantaneous velocity at one second? And so that's kind of what you're centering in on. And we said this right here. We said that... Um, instantaneous velocity could also just be called the velocity and so we said we took a guess remember the velocity at one second is and remember we guessed two feet per second and in math I mean that's not we we don't really like to use the word hey let's guess the answer but that's what we did. That's the best that we could do back then. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of show you something pretty neat. Um, how can we say? 
this. We're going to look at the average velocity in the time interval from 1 to x or from x to 1. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. The average velocity from 1 to x or x to 1. So from 1 to x we go um, f of n time minus f of beginning time. This is all over x minus 1. So that is what this is. Maybe we'll, we'll do some colors here. And that happens to be the average velocity on 1 to x. Now from the paper before, we also could see that it is the average velocity from x to 1. So this expression right here describes all your average velocities. We could go ahead and say, well, let's say x is, um, x could be 2, or x could be 1.5, or x could be 1.1, x could be 0.9. We are going to get something, we're going to be using this calculation. We could use this calculation to get all those average velocities. But what we want to do is, remember how we guessed and we were making the time intervals smaller and smaller and smaller? How do we make the time intervals smaller and smaller and smaller? We can take the limit as x approaches what? As the time, keeps, the time interval keeps getting smaller, we can make x approach 1. Okay? You know, that's weird. So this right here will get you the instantaneous velocity. Let's show you how that works. So look at this. This is the limit as x approaches 1. f of x is, we'll, we'll just say this is x squared. We'll just say x squared because you put, you know, you could put happy face. f of happy face is happy face squared. So here's x squared minus f of 1 is 1 squared, so we'll just say 1, and then we have x minus 1. Now we've done limits like this in our book, and what you do is you say, oh, well look at the top can be factored into x minus 1, x plus 1, and on the bottom look what you have, you have an x minus 1. So basically here you have a hole in the graph. And we learned that we could just say that this is the limit, here's a 1 here, as x approaches 1 of just the expression x plus 1. And what happens when you put 1 into that expression? You get 1 plus 1, which is 2, which was our guess. This guy right here is the instantaneous velocity, and we'll just say velocity, at 1 second. And so there it is. The instantaneous velocity at 1 second, remember that is the slope of a tangent line. So I'll just say slope of tangent. And this guy right here, the average velocity, this orange part right here, this is the slope of secant lines. I'll just say slope of secant. And so this is how we do it. We don't have to make a guess. We could just say the average velocity from 1 to x or from x to 1 is all going to be this expression. And then we can take the limit as x approaches 1. And that's what we did. We got the slope of the secant. And so we approached one from both sides. It's kind of what we're doing here. We're approaching one from both sides and we use this expression. And now we're going to ask another question and then we'll spend some time developing this.
we are going to ask what is the velocity at five seconds. So that is our question. So we know what the velocity at one second is. What is the velocity at five seconds? And so that is what we're going to do. Take down another piece of paper here. And our function. Let's just write this up here. So we'll, I'll just make this problem number one. We want the average velocity in, let's just say from five to six. Okay. Well, what we would do is we would say F of six minus F of 5 all over 6 minus 5. Now some of you might say, well should we just plug that into t squared? I'm not going to do that. The next thing I want to know, because I'm trying to get my instantaneous velocity at 5 seconds, but I'm sort of doing baby steps. What is the average velocity in the time interval from x to 5 or we could say 5 to x. Okay, so we can approach 5 from both sides. Here we're sort of approaching 5 from the right side because 6 is on the right and then we could do 5.5 and 5.1 and 5.01. So this is when you're approaching it from the right side and this is when you're approaching 5 from the left side. Now of course, you know, like if you did put an x value in here, like if you put 4 in here, 4 or 5, is, you couldn't say 5 comma 4. This x varies depending on which side you're on, but in any case, we can actually write an expression for any x value that fits this mold, as long as x is not 5. And this is the expression. I'm just going to look at, um, I'll go like this, I'll go f of x minus f of 5, this is all over x minus 5. And so you saw it up here with the 6, and so now we just have an x there. But if, if x was 4, we wouldn't use this one. We'd use this one right here, and f of 4 minus f of 5, and then 4 minus 5 would give you the same thing as if you had done displacement over time. We just have negatives in front of both of them. Okay, so that's the average velocity in this time interval. Okay, so problem number 3, what is the instantaneous velocity at the time 5. Well, all it would be would be the limit as x approaches 5 of this creature. And so I'm going to write that. The limit as x approaches 5 of this creature here. f of x minus f of 5 all over x minus 5. That's kind of what we did right here when um, we were looking for instantaneous velocity at 1. It's, look, it looks pretty much the same except now we have 5's there. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is have you do a substitution. I'm going to let h equal x 
minus 5. Now if I let h equal x minus 5, then what does x equal when you go to solve this equation right here? x is going to equal 5 plus h. Now why would I do that? Well you'll see. So we're going to rewrite this, the instantaneous velocity at 5 is now going to look a little different. Okay, It's going to have h's in it and it will look like this. It will look like the limit. Okay, so we'll, we'll come back and write the limit later. Let's just write this part here. So this is going to be f of 5 plus h. So I'll write that 5 plus h minus f of 5 and then on the bottom, well what do we have on the bottom? x minus 5 is h, so I'm going to replace that x minus 5 with an h, and I just smeared it there. Now over here we've got to be careful, so this is the limit. Now as x approaches 5. Think of it that approaches almost as an equal sign. Okay, well we can't treat it exactly like an equal sign. I'm going to replace the x with a 5 plus h. Approaches 5. And I'm going to subtract 5 on both sides of this arrow and I'm, where is h approaching? h is approaching 0. So this right here is the expression I'm looking for. It's still the instantaneous velocity at 5, except the limit is now h goes towards 0 instead of x goes toward 5. Both will get me the instantaneous velocity. We like this one better because limits are easier when you make the letter go to 0. Okay, problem number 5. I want the instant velocity at any time, and we'll make this in blue, at any t. So I'm going to replace that red 5 with a blue t. And so look what I'm going to get. I'm going to get limit as h approaches 0, f of instead of 5, t plus h minus f of t, this is all over h. So this is the instant velocity at any time. This creature here is called the derivative. Or another name, the velocity function. Or another name, the slope function. And when we say the slope function, we mean the slope of tangent lines at points. So the derivative is the velocity function, is the slope function. Now I know some of you are sitting through this going, I don't know what is happening. What did he just do? Well, remember how we guessed what our instantaneous velocity was at a time. We don't have to guess anymore. So let me just kind of run you through an example and show you what, what we're doing. So here's our example. Our example is this f of t is t squared. Um, look what we have here. Actually, I forgot to point this out. This right here is the limit of the difference quotient. That is the difference quotient. So let's take a look at the difference quotient of this. This is f 
of t plus h minus f of t all over h. Let's go ahead and compute it. Um, f of t plus h is t plus h quantity squared. So this is why we did difference quotient in here for the review. And then this is minus f of t, so minus t squared. This is all over h. Difference quotient equals t squared plus 2ht plus h squared minus t squared all over h. The t squareds cancel out and you have 2ht plus h squared all over h. So the difference quotient then can be written factor in h out the top. So we have h times quantity 2t plus h. This is all over h. The h is cancel. You end up getting difference quotient equals 2t plus h. So our velocity function, which we could call this v of t if you like, so I will, v of t equals the limit, so now I'm writing this up here as h approaches 0 of dq, which we've computed to be 2t plus h. So what happens when you put h, you know, we replace it with a 0, you end up just getting 2t. So this tells me the velocity function of t squared is 2t. What we like about this, it gives us the velocity at any time and that's what makes us really happy about this. So at time 1, this is the one where we took a guess, you just put 1 into this function, it's 2 times 1, it is 2. At velocity 5, because that was the one that we were really asking, you know, at, at the end of one of the papers, I think it said, what is the velocity at 5 seconds? Well, now look, you can put 5 in there, and it's 10. What is the velocity at 3 seconds? Well, that gives us 6. And the velocity at negative 5 seconds? That gives us negative 10. And we could say, what's the velocity at 2.5? We can just plug whatever time in there, and that will give us the instantaneous velocity. And so this is why we learned limits and difference quotients, so we could do problems like this. But now the next thing that I'm going to do is we're going to do another problem. And then this is what you do in bug 6. So we will do another problem new example. Okay, so here's an example. We have a position function of a bug on a number line. It looks like this. 2t squared minus 3t plus 1. Part A. So this is how your bug 6 is going to be. It's going to ask you to find the difference quotient. And for the most part, that's going to be the hardest part of these problems. So to find the difference quotient, we've got to remember what the difference quotient is. The difference quotient is f of t plus h minus f of t. This is all over h. Okay, so this is going to be an algebraic nightmare. We put t plus h and you, all the places in for t. So that's what we're doing now. And I will color code this. So we have 2 t plus h squared minus 3 t plus h plus 1. So this part right here became that right there. The hardest part of your homework for bug 6 is doing the difference quotient. This is minus 
from this minus here, and then this guy right here is your function, which I will put parentheses around it. So watch this. 2t squared minus 3t plus 1. Put a circle around there, a yellow circle, and then this is all over h. We are doing the worst part of this problem. There's four parts, a, b, c, and d. The worst part is this part. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and multiply the t plus h times t plus h. So this is going to be t squared plus 2ht plus h squared minus, distribute the negative 3, minus 3t minus 3h plus 1, distribute the negative sign in the yellow part, minus 2t squared plus 3t minus 1. This is all over h. Distribute the 2, 2t squared plus 4ht plus 2h squared minus 3t minus 3h. I'm just copying things down, plus 1 minus 2t squared plus 3t minus 1. This is all over h. Okay, so what's going to cancel out? Um, a negative 1 and a 1. We also can cancel out the 3t and the negative 3t. Anything else? Yes, this right here. This crosses out the negative 2t squared with the 2t squared. And you're left with three terms on the top. They each have an h in them, so I'm going to factor out the h. h. And then we have 4t plus 2h minus 3. This is all over h, and then what happens? The h's cancel. What is the difference quotient? The difference quotient here is 4t plus 2h minus 3. That is the difference quotient. Find dq. We did that. Now, they're asking me for part b. Find the velocity function. Another word for that is the derivative. And the derivative, or the velocity function, looks like this. It is the limit as h approaches 0 of dq. So this is the limit as h approaches 0. Here's the dq right there, which is 4t plus 2h minus 3. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in 0 for h there. And my velocity function becomes just a 4t minus 3. There we have it. Okay, part C. So remember our original function, let's just show you our original function was that right there. And we have the velocity function. And we're going to learn like shorter ways, more efficient ways of finding this velocity function. But for now we're going to do it this way. And so part C says find the velocity of the bug at two seconds. Well, what would you do here? You would put two into the velocity function. V of two is, let's see what it is. It's eight minus three, which is five. Five feet per second. So do you see how quick part C is once you have the velocity function? Let's do part D. Part D says, um, find the velocity, I'm just going to go dot 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 because I'm lazy, at negative 1 seconds. So all you would do is put negative 1, that's a time, into the velocity function. And it spits out the instantaneous velocity and that would be 4 times negative 1 minus 3 is negative 7 feet per second. 
So that it, there it is. Now we know how to grab the instantaneous velocity. And let me just put a little note down here at the bottom. The velocity is the limit as h approaches zero of the difference quotient, which was t, oh, sorry, f of t plus h minus f of t all over h. We like to make the limit approach zero because it's easier for our calculations. Now, just so you know, the alternative for the velocity function is this. V of t is limit as x approaches t f of x minus f of t all over x minus t. And it looks like this alternative looks better because it this reminds me of before you hit the limit, this reminds me of the average velocity in the time interval from x to t, or from t to x. Um, and then you're making the um, times get closer and closer together, and you're getting the instantaneous velocity. However, this one's a little bit more difficult to do when you're first learning calculus because now you're making the limit go to something that is not zero. So where is this one seen? This one is seen a lot more in, and there is a class called this, you'd have to go to the university to take it, advanced calculus. And they focus on proofs, and yes, this does have its advantages, but for now, this is where the gold is, the limit as h approaches zero of dq. So hopefully you will not have any problems with bug six. The worst part of bug six is something you've already done in your life, which was computing the difference quotient. Hitting that with a limit as h goes to zero, not a big problem. And asking for velocities at certain times after you have a velocity function, even less of a problem. You're just evaluating a function. So. Hopefully this bug six brought difference quotient, bug, and limits all together to give us the derivative. I'll see you in the next video. You guys have a good day.